What is happening, y'all? Fighting Cowboy here, and welcome on back to our coverage of Elden Ring. And it's time to make our way onto General Radon. Now, General Radon is a fairly difficult demigod, uh, but this isn't going to be a one on one fight. This is going to be a festival. So he is going to talk for a bit. Uh, you're able to talk to some of the NPCs here whenever you are ready to go. Go up and talk to him directly and say, ready as I'll ever be. He is going to do a intro movie of Radon, which on your own, I would suggest watching. It's actually pretty cool. A um, little fun fact about Radon, the little horse. He's not actually hurting the little horse. Uh, Radon got so big and his small horse was so small and weak that he uses the power of gravity to keep himself afloat just so he can still ride his favorite little horse. Is that not the coolest thing or what? Uh, but grab that smithing stone six and then head right on over here to the elevator and this is going to bring us on down. Now a big disclaimer before this fight. Uh, this is a raid style battle, so you're going to be summoning a lot of NPCs once you get in there. You don't have to, but it's kind of how the fight is meant to go. At the same time, however, if you were to uh, go to multiplayer and pop an item, you may notice signs right down here by the summoning pool. Summoning other players will impact Radon's health. Summoning all of the NPCs in there will not. So, just food for thought, if you're really struggling, pulling from another player is a great idea. Uh, but if you can get by without other players here, it's going to help. Because pulling in other players is just going to beef his health bar up even more. Uh, but either way, let's talk about the fight. Now, the Radon fight being a festival, there are a multitude of NPCs you can summon. You're able to see the summon signs all over the ground right now. Uh, in particular, I do like attempting this fight either at evening or early morning. I just think the signs pop out a little bit more as compared to the red background you see right now. But at the start of the fight, you want to rush over to Radon as fast as possible. By doing that, he's going to stop shooting arrows and he's going to transition into fighting with his swords. Now, like most big bosses, you're able to get right under his legs, and this is going to be where you have the best chance of dealing damage, whether that's going to be by charged heavies or consecutive attacks. Uh, basically getting right under his butt. He doesn't really have much he can do to hit you when you get under his butt. Uh, at the same time, however, Radon does tend to spin around a lot. He has very wide sweeping attacks, and if you aren't careful, it's very easy to get caught out and take a load of damage because those swords coated in crag blade will really, really hurt. As for attacks to look out for, the most dangerous in phase one is going to be this cross cut. He will come down with both of his blades, slamming them into the ground, and this will also generate a shockwave which will go forward from him. The best way to avoid this is going to be rolling right as it is coming down, therefore both avoiding Radon and the shockwave. Besides that, he also has Starcaller Cry. This is going to group up everyone in the arena in front of him, at which point he will slam his blades down. If you're caught in this, I highly suggest you try going underneath his legs and making your way behind him to avoid the big slam that comes out. After Radon gets to approximately 50%, phase two is going to start, and during this phase, it will begin by him jumping up in the sky and disappearing. After a short duration, he will come crashing down as a comet, which will do massive damage, and in general, will instant kill you if you don't manage to get out of the way. Beyond this, he also picks up a couple new moves in this phase, including a spinning vortex maneuver, and one that is going to involve large crags that he can send flying your way through massive amounts of damage. Both of these attacks I highly recommend you avoid by riding on Torrent, not later active. Uh, these are attacks that, even if you are able to dodge them, just because of the multi-hit nature, there's a good chance that you're still going to end up getting hurt. So, with all that being said, let's hop on in. Uh, now, while we can certainly solo him, I do want to show how this fight would proceed uh, if you take it from the approach of it being a festival and you summoning in everything. So, we're going to go ahead and pick up these three signs. And as you saw right there, that arrow just ended up hitting the object, but you can roll through them. And uh, Patches is out here. You, however, cannot summon Patches. If you summon him, he basically just waves and he leaves. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't even pay attention to the signs. The best thing to do here is just run past and grab them and mash either Y or Triangle, along with getting close enough that he is going to pull out his swords. Once he does, we're just going to stay very maneuverable 
And right now, all I'm really doing is I'm waiting for the whole gang here. You can see there's a ton of people that are running on in for this fight. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're just going on in. We're going to pop our flask. And now that everyone is showing up, we're going to go on in and try to get some damage in. As I mentioned, try and stay right near the butt of him. And if you want, you can actually stay on your horse for a large amount of this fight. You can either, you know, stay on the horse and run around, or stay on the horse and attack from mounts. Uh, both of those are going to, to work here against Radon, just to show a little bit of that. Running on in. I'll just do a little drive-by heavy attacks. And one of the nice things about that is that the, the horse is going to take a blunt of a lot of AoE type attacks. So, if you're concerned, this is probably the safest approach. Now, with phase two starting, we're going to get as far away from them as possible. Hopes that he comes down towards me. If he comes down towards them, he's going to wipe all of them out. Uh, and if he does, you know, we'll just go and we'll, we'll pick up more summon signs. I notice that there's even more signs you can see. There's one here, there's one on the hill. Uh, and I want to say there's two to three iterations of signs. So a summon going down isn't necessarily the end. Now that we got the rocks up, I'm going to actually play a little bit passively. Uh, the rocks are just, they're very dangerous. And you know when they're going to come because they're going to spread away from Radon. But there's no reason for me to even run on in and tempt fate against those rocks. Go ahead and pop the Crimson Flask. I'm just going to run around look for some more summon signs since a couple people died. Go on in and get a little drive-by. The rocks are spreading, so we're going to wait and sprint. That's exactly how we want to avoid those. You can see there the horse taking the, the brunt of that wave attack. There's the star caller's cry. We'll get behind him. And we can probably finish this here. One lion's claw should do it. Ooh, there is the uh, there's the corkscrew I had warned us about, but there it is. And you can see, I mean, honestly, I'm kind of kind of glad I I had a chance to capture that because man, that corkscrew, God, y'all saw how much damage that did when it hit, and that was and that's with 40 vigor, uh, and we we don't have on the talisman that's decreasing our defense anymore, so. Very hard-hitting attack. Do you think that hits hard, though? Ooh, you should have seen him. At launch, he was a different monster. They ended up uh, toning him down quite a bit. But after the fight, you're going to want to run on over here, grab the grace. I'd certainly suggest watching those cutscenes on your own, though. They're definitely worthwhile watching. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick this up. And then over here, you can uh, talk to Blaith. He was a living the path is now to knock Let's meet with him. We'll take up us. He just mentions how we're going to be going to Nakron next, which is where you would go to both continue the Ronnie quest line oh, and to get a bunch of goodies. One Make sure to come on over here son. and talk to our Jar friend. Um, luck, this is going to progress his quest line, which, as I mentioned, is very much worth doing. Definitely one of the, uh, the best talismans in the game. Uh, after doing all that, we are going to make our way all the way up to here. And once we get all the way up there, we are going to find a cave that we can check out. So, start running. So, quite a long run, but making it all the way over here. Let's see, we have a set of doors waiting for us. I promise that's the only thing to find out in this uh, the vast expanse of Verdun. We're going to just run on down here and grab this so that we have access to War Dead Catacombs a little bit later. Because one of the... Uh, the legendary Ashen Summons that you need if you want to get that trophy is actually located down here. So definitely not an area that you want to miss. Uh, but either way, we are going to wrap things up here. In the next part of the series, we are going to be uh, making our way on down into Nakron, and you'll have a chance to see the remainder of the underground zones in Elden Ring.